Welcome back to the series of videos on staying healthy and preventing COVID-19 infection during the current epidemic. This one we are going to do, discuss about the evidence, reliability and taking decisive actions promptly that can lead to can, controlling the epidemic quickly. So action taken without the data and reliable information can be more harmful for a country than not taking action. There are some examples of those. Question is how reliable the evidence gathered. Unbiased and accurate evidence in an essential part of understanding the issues and indeed taking the right informed decisions by the administration. One can only rely on the evidence if they are reliable, unbiased, truthful, and coming on real time, particularly linked to a GIS-based data. Taking actions based on a gut feeling, for example, likely to cause more problems than indeed not taking actions. Such action will cause more harm than the public good to the population. So therefore, should not be inclined to take the gut feeling derived action in critical situations. Let's look at the importance of large scale testing to start with, which hasn't done in many countries yet. Unless the random community based testing is done, it is impossible to assess the number of people who are infected and even to extrapolate such estimates to a given country. Whatever the estimate claim going to be inaccurate in the absence of such community-based testing. Rely on the hospital testing is extremely skewed and underestimate the ongoing incidence of COVID-19. Although death rates could be reliable, but not always as the diagnosis may not necessarily be related to the infection itself. The majority of those with good immunity may not even have any symptoms. If they are fed all, they could have had a mild flu-like illness, which is taken for granted. And they recover well and never go to hospital and never include in the statistic. So these unnoticed indications or the, uh, the carriers can indeed can also spread the disease to others. So not having a good estimate of the number of those who are infected is a major problem for most countries. It also gives wrong speculations and the prevalence of the disease and include the death rates because these, all these are based on the so-called accurate numbers of the people who are infected. If you don't community-based random screening testing, this information never going to be available. So such published numbers without having those mentioned data are indeed misleading. The death rate, let's go briefly how these are calculated in a very simple term. The death rate is calculated by using the denominator, the number of deaths due to COVID, which is reasonably easy if they are diagnosed properly before the death. And the denominator is the number of infected people. Again, unless widely tested in community samples, there's no, no way one could predict or get a number of those who are infected. Hospital-based testing statistics are extremely unreliable and grossly underestimated. Let's look at the prevalence rate calculation. They're calculated by the number of infected people. Again, we don't have that data in most countries, divided by the population. So since a key figure in both calculation are the number of infected people and that is not known, therefore death rate and the percentage prevalent rates reported cannot be relied upon. In the absence of conducting the large scale random testing in the given community or communities, why can, one cannot even give a close estimate of numbers. Whatever administration says is likely to be wrong. 
Random testing using systematic sample in the community is the best way forward and the real solution to overcome this problem. If done properly, in a statistical validated manner of getting the samples correct and distributed across the country, it will then provide the reasonable number and the accuracy that can be extrapolated to the entire population in confidence. With confidence. In the absence of mass scale testing, what is reported and known in the circulation is only going to be the tip of the iceberg. Indeed, what I call in the walk in the dark. So, another issue to putting people together is the quarantine centers. The experience gained from the cruise ships, let's take the example of Princess Diamond cruise ship, demonstrated that such will make a mark, such will markedly increase the spread of the disease, infecting in this case up to 20% in such a short period in that captured group of people with a given death rate of 1% for the time being. Same thing can happen in the quarantine centers or so-called observation centers when people put together and not isolated individually in their own rooms safely. Whenever they are allowed to mix, there's, if there's one person in that group with the virus, they, he or she can spread to the entire group. So those which poor immunity are going to get the disease. And of course, people with strong immunity might get the disease but may not have any information. Again, the number of people getting infected will not be known unless everybody in that center is tested in appropriate time. While the WHO report average death rate is 3.2 so globally, the age adjusted death rate in the age range between uh, 0.2 and 0.5 percent. It's much different from 3.2 percent uh, widely publicized. This is contrary to the reported media hypes in almost all countries, it's exaggerating death rates and dramatizing each and every incident, which is completely unnecessary and misleading. The needs for ICU admission and the death rates are markedly skewed towards elderly, those who are age, above the age 75, simply because they have a poor immune system, they are not getting out in the sunshine to develop their vitamin D level and therefore boosting the immune system. And most of them, almost all of them, taking multiple medication and having comorbidities such as diabetes, hypertension, immunosuppressive drugs taking and pulmonary and cardiovascular chronic diseases. So these will markedly increase their chance of getting the disease and needed in intensive care unit and indeed uh, dying sooner in this circumstance. However, one need to be cognizant with that their life expectancies, expectancies expectations are even in the absence of COVID-19 infection would have been little. So it's possible that COVID-19 is the last straw on their lives, but nevertheless, it is, it is can be diagnosed as a disease caused by the COVID-19. Taken overall evidence, it is now the time to get people back to work and the economy to get going before it's a virtual bankruptcy occurs in many of the developing and countries and emerging economies. The next video I will discuss what are the right actions should have been taken or should be taken even now by each administration. Thank you.